since we have a panel, we can do many issues. And this week, as I mentioned in the monologue, we got back to normal. And when I say normal, I mean ugly racial incidents. Uh, <laughs> Preceded by Joe Biden at the beginning of the week having a controversy where he said, if you have a problem figuring out whether to vote for me or Donald Trump, you ain't black. Now, I actually must tell you, I hate it when people use that sort of phrase. If you don't agree with this opinion I have, then you ain't this thing. You ain't a woman. You ain't an American. You ain't a patriot. I'm not for that. But uh, Kanye West, for example, don't agree with him on Trump. But I loved it when he said... The mob can't make me hate him. Love that. But it's also true. Now, we saw this incident, I mentioned it in the monologue, about the person who was, uh, George Floyd is his name, a black man who was killed by this white police officer in Minneapolis, a replay of the Eric Garner incident somewhat. Uh, just, it could have stopped. The crowd's yelling at him. Unbelievable. Trump is all in on the cops. And the cops, let's be honest, almost all of them are all in on Trump. In that light, I kind of understand what Joe Biden is saying. Why would a black person vote for Donald Trump? Yeah, except he didn't say that, right? He said it in an awkward, uh, lame way, and he apologized, which he should have done. And I think the fact that it, you know, it, he's held to a higher standard, so the story goes on and on and on, and, you know, whereas Donald Trump lies constantly, and, and it's sort of normalized all the time. But yeah, I mean... He could have said in a more articulate way, America is very racist. And in fact, we have a huge problem with white supremacy. And sometimes that plays out in policing frequently. And so while people look at these individual cases, a George Floyd, a uh, Philandro Castile, Sandra Bland, uh, Eric Garner, they're not really individuals, right? It's a systemic problem that people don't necessarily want to figure out how to to tackle. It's not individuals. It's a system. And by the way, I would throw in, you know, dog lady in Central Park, Amy Cooper, right? She's part of that same conversation because what she was doing very clearly uh, as she approached this birder guy, Chris Cooper, right, was saying, listen, I can weaponize the fact that if I tell the police on the phone that an African-American man is threatening me, that's going to trigger something, and I can I can leverage that, and I can use that, and I can use that power against you, and that's the America we live in. So I wish Biden hadn't said that because it's like you say, like I hate when people say those things. It's it's stupid, and he apologized, and I wish everybody would move on and focus on other things. But I don't think there's a huge number of black people who are supporting Donald Trump. If you look at the polls, you know it's some, but it's not a lot. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when Trump told the black people, what do you have to lose? Um, you know, why wouldn't you vote for me? Everything's gone so bad. Well, it's been four years now. Um, and I think they actually have some experience with what they have to lose under four <laughs> more years of Trump. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Biden can uh, can make some really awkward statements, but I don't think Biden's in any danger of losing the black vote um, to our present president. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame because when you look at this situation, you mentioned the the Coopers. They're both named Cooper. <laughs> the people in Central Park, if people weren't following this closely, there's a bird watcher, uh, an African-American guy named Christian Cooper. He's a bird watcher. And Amy Cooper is a white lady dog walker. And no relation. No relation. <laughs> it, it's, 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 if, it, if there wasn't the ugly racial part of it, it could be a meet cute for a rom-com. It really could. Two people named Cooper, a dog walker and a bird watcher meet in the park. But here's the interesting thing I want to ask about. She is an Obama-donating Democrat, Amy Cooper. So does this wait, show us... Wait, so white liberal ladies can be racist? Well, what? that's my question. I'm is, shocked. I'm this is... appalled. I can't believe it. <laughs> well, over. a lot of people think that way. Cert certainly uh, conservatives feel, I know, talking to them often that liberals are phony about issues like this. That's one thing they don't like about liberals. They say, well, you scold us for things like using oil, but you use oil. You scold us for being elitist, you bribe your kids into college. You scold us for being racist, but you take advantage, uh, even if you're not racist in the park, of racial inequities in hiring and jobs and lots of housing and lots of stuff. And in this case, it, it, it's gonna look to a lot of people, yes, like white liberalism is this thing. Am I on camera on Zoom? <laughs> it's very thin. Very thin. 
Is that I, is that what you're saying, there, Zelda? There are plenty of white liberal people who are racist. And I think Amy, I have no idea about her political leanings, but I'm not surprised at all. She's in New York City walking her dog. Uh, I, I'm not surprised. And by the way, I think if you poll with a Black people that you, well, I was going to say bump into on the street, but we're not doing that anymore, that you call up on Zoom calls, they would tell you, yeah, they work with lots of white liberal people who also were racist. So it's not a surprise. And I think it's just a mistake to think that white liberal ladies can't be, can't be racist. I, I think we should just understand that um, the reason why Trump was elected and the reason why there is such incredible polarization in society right now is because the top 10% of earners in the United States have been so focused on ensuring that they not only maintain, but also extend their privilege. And for me, the scandal that really summarized all of this was Varsity Blues and all of these very wealthy people that were doing everything possible to ensure that their kids, not deserving, found a way to get into those best schools. And when I saw the Greenwich, Connecticut, that 50% of high schoolers taking the SAT out of Greenwich had uh, letters from doctors that allowed them to take it with no time restrictions, unmonitored. That, that's not just rigged. I mean, that is the system. That's structural. That's if you have any capacity, that's what you're going to do. And, and I think that comes in every shape and every form. But we know what it's about. And, and this, this Central Park incident was enough, yet another reflection. And everyone on the wrong side of that said, yep, we know. We know what that's about. Okay, yeah, and ask. I think structural is the key word, right? So it's structural. It, it's beyond even liberal or uh, 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 conservative. It is the structure of how historically white women, and there's a five gajillion examples of this, have been able to leverage some power against somebody, a black men. I mean, I think the thing that I found most interesting about Amy Cooper was this idea that she, she makes it so clear, right? And she gets on the phone and says, an African-American man is threatening me. She knows exactly what buttons she's pressing in order to get the police to respond a certain way, a way that could have ended up like, you know, Mr. Floyd. So yeah, I, I don't think it matters whether she's, uh, you know, writing checks to, you know, liberal causes or whatever. I'm not surprised at all.